Well, the title of today's sermon is Strength for Troubled Times, and I invite us to hear God's Word today from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice, and let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. And it is he who will redeem Israel from all of its iniquities. So I want to share a little bit about me today, and I want to say that I love my routines. I like for things to remain the same. I like to be comfortable. I've got my daily habits and my weekly habits that are right in my wheelhouse that I want to remain the same. Uh, on the other hand, I've got friends who are very adventurous. Are y'all adventurous? Anybody adventurous out there? Uh, I've got friends that like to try new things. They like to explore new places. They like to experiment with all kinds of new foods. I got a buddy who uh, got in his truck one day and drove multiple hours on a whim to another state to go check out a donut place one morning. And uh, I heard that story, and I said, that is crazy. I don't think I could be friends with that guy anymore. I think i got to cut that friendship off. That is nuts. Well, to no one's surprise, I am not all about the adventuresome life. I'm the person who doesn't want to try anything new. I don't, I don't like getting out of my comfort zone. I don't want to stretch myself out beyond what I already know. I don't want to order something new at a restaurant because I might get that something new and it might be no good. And I'll be wondering the whole time, why did not I get that old thing? I knew that thing was good. Anybody else like that? Maybe I'm the only one. Well, one thing that I found out in this life is that life loves to cause interruptions to our routines, doesn't it? Things happen that we did not expect or plan for. Curveballs come our way. Change comes at us all the time. And just about the time that we get used to that, something else will change. And we'll have to get used to that then. It seems that all of our habits and our routines and our usual way of doing things has a way of getting turned upside down by life. And I just want to admit today, I want to say out loud that I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I want things to go the way I want them to go. I want things to be normal. I don't want anything to shake up the routine. But the problem is that we don't get to be in charge of the interruptions of life. We can't control when curveballs are going to come our way. We don't know when something is going to come and disrupt our routines and our carefully laid out plans. And when I think about that reality, I feel fear and anxiety, and worry, loneliness, and dread. And we worry about all kinds of things in life, don't we? We worry about sickness. We worry about our children and our grandchildren, our parents aging. We worry about jobs. We worry about uh, being able to get through difficult situations in life. We're worried about our finances, our bank accounts, our retirement accounts. We worry about our friendships and our social standing. We worry about our sports teams. Sometimes we worry about those more than anything else. I'm really worried about the Atlanta Braves right now. They're not looking too good. I don't know what's up with that. We live almost in a constant state of worry. Now, my question is this. Does the Bible have anything to say to us during a feeling like that? I would say that if you, if you turn on the news, if you open up your computer, you'll see that we're living in difficult times right now. We are living in troubled times, not to mention the trouble in our own lives. And so the question remains, does the Bible have anything to say to that during our troubled times? And I believe that the answer to that is yes. Yes, it does. In fact, did you know that there's an entire book in your Bible dedicated to prayers to God? The book called The Psalms, you just heard from it. And these prayers to God uh, cover a wide range of human emotions. And there are plenty of prayers in the Psalms that cover troubled times. 
Psalm 130. It's one of those psalms that we look at today. And first of all, we learn here in the psalm that we can cry out to God. The psalmist prays in verse 1, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Have you ever felt desperation like that before? Maybe you're feeling it right now with something that's going on in your life. And when the psalmist says the depths, he envisions like the depths of the sea. He feels like he is drowning. It's easy to feel that way sometimes, isn't it? It's also overwhelming. It feels like the waves are crashing over us and that it's going to take us under and we just want things to stop. We just want some relief and rescue. I love that the Bible speaks the exact same feelings that we go through sometimes. I love that the Bible does not just paint a picture of life and where everything's wonderful, where everything always works out, it's always sunshine and roses. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes, too much of the time, my problem is that I try to handle everything by myself. I try to handle everything on my own. I try to be tough. I try to be self-reliant. And I try to go at it alone. But what we learn here in the psalm is that we should not leave God out of the equation when we go through times of trouble. We are to cry out to God. We are to pray to God, Lord, hear me. I'm calling out to you. Listen to me. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Y'all, we don't need to go through it alone because sometimes we just can't handle everything by ourselves. Sometimes the difficulties and the troubles of life are too real, they are too heavy, and they are too much. May we become a people who cry out to God. May we be a people of prayer. Many years ago, I heard about an uh, elderly English pastor who was famous for his wonderful pastoral prayers on Sunday mornings. He was the kind of pastor who, who would always find something to thank God for, even in the difficult times. And one Sunday morning, it was especially uh, dark and rainy outside, kind of a thunderstorm was going on, and everything was going wrong in the community. There were all kind of difficult situations that were going on in people's lives. People in the church were going through difficult things, and the pastor himself was going through a terrible time. That morning, he stepped up into the pulpit to pray, and one of the members of the congregation turned to their spouse and whispered this. They said, well, check this out. Watch this. This preacher is finally going to have nothing to thank God for on a morning like this. The pastor was good and quiet for a while. He finally spoke up and he prayed this. He said, we thank thee, O God, that it is not always like this. I love that. It's not always like this. There is a brighter future than where we might be at right now. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who wants to hear from us. We have a God who wants to walk with us through life. And prayer, crying out to God, can lead us into that brighter future. Next, we learn through the psalm that we can also find our strength in God. The psalmist recognizes that with God there is forgiveness. And when there is forgiveness for our sins, we find true strength for living. No matter what situation we're facing in this life, no matter what we might be dealing with at this moment, let us never forget that our number one need is to be forgiven by God. Our number one need is to be made right with the Lord and to be restored to Him. And we can't do that by ourselves. We can't do that on our own. We need God to forgive us and to heal our sin-sick souls. And the good news is that we can actually have our sins forgiven. The psalmist says that if God kept a record of our sins, that not one of us would be able to stand before him in his presence. Not one of us would have a hope in the world. But verse 4 speaks a word of hope. Gospel hope. Verse 4 says, but there is forgiveness with you. Isn't that great news? With God there is forgiveness. With God, there is new life. With God, there is salvation. Even amidst the problems and the trials of life, we can cling to the greatest news the world has ever heard. Our sins have been forgiven. We have been restored to God. And we can now live as new and different people because of what God has done for us. And I think that goes a long way 
in helping us through the difficulties of this life. When we know that God is on our side, when we trust that God is for us, then we can find strength to face whatever comes our way. Heard about a battered fighter who was in the boxing ring trying to win the big fight one night. But he was getting overpowered in the early rounds, and during one of the breaks between the rounds, he heard his trainer yelling out to him. The, 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 the trainer said, champ, keep it up. You're doing great. He ain't laid a glove on you yet. And that's when this boxer snapped back into reality. And he said, well, then, you better keep an eye on that referee because somebody in this ring is beating the daylights out of me. Doesn't life feel that way a lot of the time? You feel like life is just beating the daylights out of you, and you don't even know which way it's coming from anymore. Today, we remember where our true strength comes from. We find our strength in God and in a living relationship with him. We experience his forgiveness for our sins, and through the Holy Spirit, we are raised up to fight a new day, raised up to be new people, raised up to become the people that we were made to be. Finally, we learn from the psalm that we can place our trust in God and in his word and our hope in his word. Verse 5 here in the psalm gives us the key to living when we're going through difficult times. It says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. I believe the key to living in trying times is by putting our full hope and trust in the Lord and in his word. And that involves patience. That involves waiting, something I'm not very good at, either one of those things. Anybody good at waiting out there? I don't think many of us are. A friend of mine went to the doctor recently. He checked in early for his 820 appointment, and then he waited, and he waited, and he waited. He finally got up to, to kind of, you know, kind of see what was going on, and he asked what was taking so long, and he was then informed that his appointment was not until 8.50, and he was there way too early for that. And he just had to wait a little bit longer. He had gotten the time wrong, and so he was going to have to wait and wait and wait. Waiting is terrible. I hate waiting. But waiting is a living reminder that God is God and that I am not. And sometimes when things go awry, uh, not only do we uh, hate waiting, but we also think that our greatest need is for things just to go back to normal. And there's probably a lot of truth in that. We certainly want that and we hope for that in our lives. But the problem is that sometimes things don't go back to normal. And our main need in this life is not for things to go back to normal. Our main need is not just for things to get back to business as usual. Our main need is to be right with God. To get right with the Lord. And God makes that possible through his son, Jesus Christ, and his forgiveness. You see, speaking for myself, troubled times help me to remember that I'm not the one who's really in charge of the world. I'm not really the one who makes the world go round. And it is a humbling reminder that God is God and we are not. But that's a necessary reminder there's only one God, and it's not us. It's him. I need that reminder from time to time. How about you? Put your hope and your trust in God. Put your hope and your trust in his word. And look to him in your times of fear and anxiety and worry. Look to him in the midst of your loneliness or your dread. Look to him when things are not going the way you want them to go. Because he loves you with an everlasting love. Look to him because he wants to be your God and he wants to bring his peace into your life. Now, what I wish the Bible would say next, uh, when, when God sees the problems, when God sees the difficulties that we're going through and we come to him with those, I wish that God would say, I've got those problems now. They're going to go away. I'm going to make them disappear and you don't have to deal with it anymore. Wouldn't that be nice if that was how it worked, if God just made our problems vanish? I wish that following God were that easy. But we know that it doesn't work that way. God doesn't just make our problems and our difficulties disappear. But what God does promise us is that even in the midst of the problems of this life, even when things are really scary and we don't know where to turn, we don't know where to go, we don't know what the future has in store, 
God promises to be our guide. And he promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. I love what the psalmist says in verse 7. Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. The Revised Standard Version says, with him is plenteous redemption. I like the sound of that. It's catchy. It sounds comforting. It sounds like there's plenty of it to go around. With God, there is plenteous redemption. It's abundant. I hope we don't take that for granted today. I hope that we do not underestimate God's redemption and his love for our lives. God wants to give us the good things of life, and we find that that is more than enough for our lives. And did you know that God is not going to run out of that stuff? It is plenteous. Have you ever been to the grocery store and you're trying to pick up a few things and you go down one of the aisles and what you're looking for is not there? And they didn't move it to another aisle. It's not in a different part of the store. It is just gone. They don't have it at all. And whatever your eating plans were that night have now been disrupted. Or you go to buy a gallon of milk and all of your milk is gone. Sure, they have plenty of skim milk, but who wants that? Who's drinking the skim milk? I don't know anybody who drinks the skim milk. Pass. Good news, God does not run out of steadfast love or plenteous redemption. We can trust that. And we can place our full hope and trust in him and in his word that it is not going to go out of stock. It's available for all of us. Right here, right now, in this place today. No matter who you are, no matter the circumstances of your life, God is here and God's redemption is here for you. So, Jack, what can we do in response to this psalm this week? Well, I think for one, it's really okay to voice our grief to God when life is hard. When we are going through tough times, we don't have to try and put on a brave face before God and act like everything is good all of the time. We can come to God as we are. The Bible, I believe, gives us permission to feel however we're feeling and to bring those feelings to the Lord. But then my next challenge to you is this. Don't just leave it there. Don't just take all your feelings to God and then walk away from that. Now, I want to challenge you to go a little bit deeper and say, God, would you now speak your gospel hope into this situation that I'm dealing with? God, would you speak your gospel hope into this thing that I am walking through? God, would you bring your peace and your assurance and your love to me right now in this moment? I want us to ask those questions. I want us to seek after God in that way. And I believe if we do, that God will remind us that he is still God. That God will remind us that he's still the one who makes the world go round. And he will bring his love and his peace and his assurance into our lives. And he will remind us that when he is at the center of our lives, then we have all that we need. Then, I believe we will learn the truth that the writer of Hebrews once wrote down. When he put down these words, he said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. And church, his strength is more than enough for these troubled times. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your son Jesus and the forgiveness that we have in Christ, the plenteous redemption that we have in Christ. Lord, we pray that you would come into our lives and just change us. We pray that you would transform us, that you would bring your hope and your peace, and your spirit into us, so that we might grow, so that we might be strengthened, so that we might be the people that you would have us to be. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.